Hello, my name is Jingo Nelly, and today we are going to be joining a Zoom business ethic class. But before we join the class, make sure you subscribe to the channel to bring you some good luck in your forthcoming exam. So for the start of uh, business ethic theories, uh, these provide a basis for decision making when ethics are to be put in play because they show the viewpoints from which different individuals see guidance as they make decisions so uh, each theory uh, shows the different decision making style an individual can put in play then uh, we are having the approaches to derive the ethical framework or theories we can also call them the branches of ethics we are having uh, normative ethics now with this it looks at a certain looks at uh sorry it looks at creation of theories that provide general moral rules governing our behavior um you can take an uh, for, you can take an example of a referee who is interested in rules governing play uh looking at how we we work out what is right and what is wrong and then we are having uh meta ethics meta ethics this is uh the study of how we engage in ethics now with this uh, f uh you can look at a football commentator rather than a ref uh, so the commentator will uh engage in ethics in such a way that uh, when somebody commits a foul uh he it is uh he gets to see it as a wrong thing and then uh we have some um, other examples such as abortion abortion doing abortion is wrong then um slavery slavery was evil so this is basically with meta ethics this is basically the study of how peop different people engage in ethics so with that uh, the lecture will add on from there in progress then, if it is not there if abortion is not there then we cannot define as something wrong if it is not there then um slavery is evil yeah it is it has happened so we can decide we can talk about it that it is evil but if it is not there then there is no ground for us to decide whether it is right or wrong so we look at likely impact so uh, sorry we look at um, the likely uh, issues that are related all that before an action then we judge we judge that action now uh, okay when you look at no uh, normative ethics, we are saying that uh, our decisions are, are dependent upon the moral rules that govern our behaviors. Uh, I said that, uh, for example, for people who, are, who believe in uh, general good, their decisions will always depend on that. And um, for people who are more of a uh, fulfilling their duties and obligations, then their rules will always depend on that. Uh, if you join a society that believes in certain principles, chances are your decisions are going to be dependent upon that. However, when it comes to meta ethics, meta ethics is more as comment. Um, when you look at a Applied ethics, uh, we have uh, applied ethics is uh, how our actions are specific in areas of our lives. Uh, how we deal with what? With certain things in life. Now, uh, applied ethics is, is more of uh, things that uh, happen on a daily basis. How we deal with them? How do people deal with uh, abortion? Uh, how do we deal with war? How people deal with uh, 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 animal rights? It is, it is. Uh, now, for the things that deal with them. Now, how people deal with such events is how is what guides our decisions in life. For example, um, if uh, if at all they 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 beat whoever steals, then. Even if uh, you find someone who has stole from another place, you will feel like you want to beat that person, because it is what uh, uh, it is what uh, 
happens to those who do so. Abortion, if it is segregating such people, or if someone aborts and you segregate that person, it is it is so. Our moral standards are guided by uh, all our moral decisions are guided by how people deal with things that befall in life, things that happen. Then also uh, for descriptive ethics, we, we describe and explain more action all um, based on phenomenons that, uh, that befall. Uh, how, how do we, uh, uh, how do we uh, describe certain things that uh, are fallen into our lives, even if they so happens? They, sorry, they so happen. For example, when you look at uh, uh, students' failure, that uh, we cannot uh, we cannot rule it out that students fail. Uh, they fail. Uh, yesterday we are trying to pass exams, uh, and uh, we found out that uh, many students fail. Uh, accounting courses or quantitative courses. We can't rule it out that students fail quantitative courses. So we try to describe what causes that failure. You will find that uh, uh, the fear that students have for quantitative courses, all of those weird parts involved. So the fear causes students missing classes, also maybe lecturers missing some, uh, some lectures, etc. Et so that is a phenomenon that, that falls. Excuse me, sir. Things that happen, we try to identify ability to attend. We can't rule it out that students fail. They fail. Yeah. And that is the, the, the reality. But they fail because they don't want to attend classes. Uh, at times those who attend, they are, they, they, they are distracted by other forces, by other things. It is, it is. And that is what? Descriptive ethics. Um, now, uh, we have to, to understand these four branches and uh, uh, the approaches that derive ethical theories. We have to understand them and they give us, they try to lay a foundation on how ethical theories have been uh, developed or designed. Uh, ethical theories are categorized in two, in two, two. We have the traditional theories and we have the postmodern theories or contemporary <laughs> theories. Those are the theories that we have. And these theories have been derived from these approaches. Um, <coughs> that thing, whether results are out. No, that one will discuss it. But they, are, they will come out in, I think, second or third week of this month. Now, um, that aside, Let's look at uh, the categories of ethics, ethics uh, ethical theories, sorry. They are categorized into two. We have the traditional theories and we have the postmodern theories or contemporary theories. Now, under the traditional theories, we have, they are still also categorized into two. We have the consequentialist. Um, someone is asking to pardon on a normative ethics. Kola Isaac, I'm sorry, we are, okay. Uh, let let me, let me take you back shortly. When you look at a normative ethics, we said that uh, we are looking at the rules that govern our behaviors. Now, um, we'll find that uh, if our principles are guided by the fact that we, we, we believe in majority rule, and that is what happens today. When you look at uh, the recent COVID-19 pandemic, during the lockdown, the presidential dialect only aimed at saving majority people. That is the basis of uh, ethical decisions that we make, that we make decisions based on what must to be right generally. Then, and also based on our duties and obligations, that our, your decisions are going to be dependent upon 
what, uh, what our decisions are going to be dependent upon what we are owed to do as human beings, the responsibility, the duties, etc., etc., and that is what that is uh, normative ethics. Now, for descriptive ethics, uh, you will find it is uh, it is more of uh, describing phenomena that uh, we describe a phenomenon. It has happened, and uh, we have to describe what caused it in most cases and what would be the like our morals are determined all they are determined they, they we, we discuss moral issues in phenomena all in things issues that happen and then our behaviors are influenced by that such that we don't they don't happen again for example that uh, we cannot rule it out that students fail exams and uh, we look at what could be the likely cause of uh, fa uh, student failure for exams that uh, they fail because they don't attend classes, they fail because uh, lecturers miss classes, they fail, they don't read, they don't revise. Now, our decisions that we are likely to make uh, afterwards are going to be dependent upon us describing that phenomenon and what could be the likely causes. Then our decisions now are going to change that how are we going to reduce on failure rate among students, that our decisions that we make as, uh, as lecturers, that we have to be in class, teach them. Then as students, we have to emphasize as well as keep telling them to attend classes. Number two, number three, sorry, we are reminding students that they have to engage in discussions, it is ETC. That is what determines uh, our decisions and descriptive ethics. I think as uh, Zerida and, um, and uh, Uhu, and Isaac, I've, I've, I've tried to answer you. Now, uh, we are on um, uh, ethical theories. The ETS is ethical theories. That uh, we are looking at ethical theories that are categorized into, we have the traditional ethical theories and the postmodern theories. Now, the traditional theories are also categorized into two. We have the postmodernist or oh, uh, all of that, that word that gives me a time to pronounce. And then we have the non consequentialist theories. I'm sorry, I'm reading someone, someone has shared something that uh, we need to. Ethics. Uh... Uh, isn't everything we know and experience a perception? Um, uh, you're going to, yeah, it's a, it is a perception, but then it is also a ground rule. It's a, it, it can also be a ground rule. Now the perso the perception of uh, things that we do and experience in life uh, uh, can come in depending on you, what you perceive to be that. But then what is the, the ground rule of certain things? You might perceive that uh, uh, passing exams is sleeping, uh, reading books, etc., etc. And the more efforts you put in, the more marks you earn. That is a perception. And if you follow that, trust me, it can, it can work out. But then the general rule is that for one to pass, you have to attend class, you have to, you have to study, you have to read books. And that is a general rule. Now, the perception comes in to either support what is, what is on ground or even try to, to, to criticize it. However, you cannot criticize certain things that, okay, perception is the thinking. You can perceive that the world would be uh, a better place if, we do. but then what is the general rule? You're going to find that the general rule today in society is that we have to follow societal rule, rules that, uh, that have been designed by those that are, that are superior to us, etc., etc. 
Uh, I don't know whether this one was asked the question. I don't see, I'm seeing Zoom user. Who is Zoom user? I don't know whether I've, uh, I've, uh, I've tried to, I, to say something about it. Zoom user? Okay, let's proceed. Maybe you can write in the chat room as well. Now, uh, when you look at um, the consequentialist or consequentialism theories, I want you to note these, these names. Teleological theories. We as try to understand those two. Another name for to uh, um, these two categories of traditional theories. Now, um, what happens? And uh, consequentialist theories, theories whose judgment of right and wrong is dependent upon the consequences of an action. For us to assume, all, for us to look at an action that is, we have to look at its consequences. Without its consequences, we can't decide. We can't. We can't uh, judge an action. For example, uh, if I slap you and uh, you cry, it means all, if I slap you and you fight back, then uh, others will judge my something being bad or wrong because you have fought back. The screen is not that you mean you're not, you're not what are you? Are you all seeing the screen? No, we are not seeing this. Yes, we can see the screen. There are those who don't we see the can. screen. We can. Okay. Now, those who can't see the screen, maybe you need to refresh because I, I share my screen. Okay. Now, let's continue. Now, when you look at uh, constitutionalist theories, we are saying that Judgment of right and wrong is dependent upon the likely consequences of an action. And if I slap you, you cry, you fight back, it means that my action of slapping was wrong. But then if I slap you, you smile, you even hug me, you can conclude and say my action was right. Now, for non consequentialist theories, the judgment of right and wrong is dependent upon the action itself, not the likely consequences. So, in simple terms, consequentialist theories, um, judgment of right and wrong is dependent upon the, let's, let me say, let me use this term, the end justifies the means, that is uh, consequentialist, uh, consequentialist theories, and then non-consequentialist the end does not justifies the mean, does not justify the means. It is the action itself that justifies itself. Um, now, uh, this is the traditional ethical theory uh, structure that we have: consequentialists and non-consequentialists. Under consequentialist theories, we have utilitarianism, egoism, hedonism. Now. For, for consequentialist theories, I want you to focus on two, utilitarianism and egoism. Hedonism is, uh, we don't have to focus much on it because uh, it's not examined, but still, I'm going to share something about it. For those who, are, who have not muted, please, can you try to mute? Pal, uh, Nachimuli, Chibirige, Grace, please meet, mute. Thank you very much. Try to, someone should try to contact them or send them messages. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we are saying that uh, we have a traditional ethical theories. We have, uh, they are categorized into two consequentialists and non consequentialists. Under consequentialists, we have utilitarianism, egoism, and hedonism. And then, non consequentialists, we have deontological, where we will look at Kantian all rights and uh, rights. Uh, sorry, we we'll look at Kantian or duty ethics, then we we'll look at rights and justice theory. Then we'll have to look at vacuum ethics theory. 
and the non-consequentials. However, many scholars continue to argue that uh, uh, vacuum ethics is, uh, is a traditional theory, but it is not a non-consequentialist theory. Though there are those who have uh, arguments that it is, however, we will discuss it as one of the traditional ethical theories. Now, let's look at uh, first. Let's look at uh, the utilitarian theory and other consequentialist theories. Now, when you look at the utilitarian theory, <coughs> what is good is is that action whose consequences generate the greatest good for the greatest number of people. That uh, an action is only right if it generates the greatest good for the greatest number of people. Uh, sorry, an action is right if its consequences generate the greatest, no, uh, the greatest good for the greatest number of people. That um, if I come to class and I teach, and uh, my teaching uh, is aimed at ensuring that majority students have to pass. I spend mo most of my time explaining, doing this. I even come back, I discuss for you. I, I take you through question approach, all that. Now, we judge, if we judge those actions based on students passing, if before you do exams, we can say that our my actions are good and are utilitarian. We are only going to judge that action at the, after seeing the end results. That if students, if majority students pass, that means that whatever I did was right. It was right under you to Italian. That's why we say greatest good for the greatest number of people. That the consequences of an action that generate the greatest good for the greatest number of people, then we, we conclude that the actions that were involved are good. However, utilitarianism is categorized in two, two. We have the act utilitarianism, where uh, that states that a person's act is morally right if and only if it produces at least as much happiness as any other act that the person could perform at that time. Now, act utilitarianism, we are looking at that particular time. For example, if I, if I, if I discover that a uh, uh, majority of my states are online are study, and I give each student two marks. Now the act of giving students two marks each is better than my teaching at that particular time. Why? Because what students are more interested in, majority of them are getting marks. Very few will always think about getting the knowledge, but getting marks. So if I decide to give two marks each student who attended class, it means that that particular act that I did that time of giving two marks to each student is better than, sorry, me teaching. Now, uh, because if I teach, chances are very few will understand what I've told. Now, for those, uh, someone is asking, what if my actions are right, but attracts few people? then that is not utilitarianism. Utilitarianism is, it, gener it has to generate the greatest good. Now, um, uh, I will try to explain that under another theory. However, for it does not look at few, but rather individual. Uh, SC, I'm going to, to explain that, but thanks for that. Then we have the rule utilitarian that says an action is right as it conforms to a rule that leads to greatest good or that right and righteousness or wrongness of a particular action is a function of the correctness of the rule of which it is an instance. Now, when you look at rule utilitarian, let's go back to the COVID-19 pandemic. We had uh, a lockdown. Now, lockdowns that were initiated by many world over we are all aimed at saving majority people. Now that is a rule utilitarian that all people should be home. No one should move to avoid or to reduce on the spread of COVID-19. Now that one is dependent upon the rules that have been set. Demo democratic rules, democratic rules, sorry, democratic rules that 
our decisions will always uh, depend on the majority role, and that is role utilitarian, which is uh, different from act utilitarian. Now, before we look at uh, the relevances and applicabilities of that, I'm going to stop this sharing, then I share with you a small video. I want you to follow this video attentively. Uh, you will only hear the sound. It is only the sound that you will hear. And maybe the few words that you will be saying, please follow those words. Now, this video tries to explain utilitarian. It has started. It tries to explain um, utilitarian in a, in, a, in a way that uh, it shows you how someone had to sacrifice his son uh, to save uh, many people who were on the train. For those of you who are following the video, for those who didn't follow, you will, uh, you will understand, you will watch it. That uh, someone had to sacrifice his son and to save majority of people who were on the train. Though the video was uh, more, it was spreading, uh, it's a gospel video. However, it tries to explain what it is. Minority suffer at the expense of majority. That assume that you're driving a bus, let's, let's use uh, Isaac. Isaac, is it Isaac who? Nkola, something Isaac. Isaac, let's assume that uh, you're driving a bus going back home uh, to your village or you're a bus driver. But as you're driving a bus, you try to overtake another car. In the bus, you're, you're having over 65 passengers. As you overtake another car, you notice that on the side that you've overtaken from, there is a border border that is coming on a high speed. And on the border border, you notice that um, that is uh, uh, on the border border, you notice that there is uh, the, the, the person riding the border border is your mother. Instantly, the same thing, the bus is going to overturn, killing 65 people. Then what do you do as a person, as you, Isaac? Do you have to kill the two? That is, uh, you kill your wife and your mother. You have to kill them. Under you to Italian, it is very simple. You have to kill. You have to kill the what? Your in-laws. You kill, you kill your mother. Sorry, you, you kill your loved ones. You kill your mother and you kill your, your wife. You kill them at or on spot to save the 65 people in the bus where you are at the same time. And this is the same thing that happened under this uh, video when you, when you watched that uh, such instances are likely to happen. This is, remember we said that in ethics, we have dilemmas. Let's go back to, let's look at, uh, let's look at the relevances and applicability of the Italian theory in our lives as well as in business. It follows uh, democratic principles. Majority rule uh, applies here. It is an alternative to theories of natural law. Natural law, in most cases, all laws that are natural that have been made are for majority people, are for all, regardless of who we are. So such laws, in their absence, utilitarian applies all it is an alternative. Then it promotes care for others. Uh, it promotes care for others. You see, in a business, it applies. Uh, you will care. This uh, is a relativities that is caring others, avoiding conflicts of interest. You don't do that benefit to the other that benefit others as well. Um, um, 
who are helping others becomes a very significant part of our life. Uh, that is over. Uh, it happens uh, in business. Let's look at business uh, basically. That um, we we'll find that a, uh, a business entity might, uh, might be making losses, but uh, it decides to to do what is good for its employees. It might okay not making losses, but it might not be performing well. It might not be making profit, but then uh, the owner decides to to pay staff not to take advantage of them. Now, the staff become the majority and the owner becomes the minority. Now, the act utilitarian is more of uh, you make a decision that generates the greatest good at that particular time, that point in time. Yet, rule utilitarian is you decide based on what has been prescribed to be right. Uh, uh, generally. We based on the rules that have been prescribed to be taking decisions that are for the general good. For example, during the pandemic, um, uh, the pandemic we saw that uh, the, pres the presidential directives were all aimed at uh, uh, seeing that majority people are saved from uh, getting COVID-19. Let's all go to the to, to the lockdown, we're in a lockdown. Now, the presidential directive is the rule duty Italian in simple terms. I don't know whether I've, I've tried to answer you. Now, now someone is saying, isn't democracy an illusion too in the end, the majority rule? Uh, rule. Uh, now we are in uh, divisions Majority rule, uh, just that uh, you will find that uh, uh, this person is trying to base her, her argument, the fact that today the world is, uh, is composed of very few people, the rich who are taking, uh, who are ruling the world. But uh, these, uh, if, uh, if majority in simple terms decide to, to raise up against the minority, the minority, it can happen. However, you're going to find that even their decisions that they make right now, the minority, so -called minority decisions for the good that they can manage and uh, call the majority. Just go back and look. It's an illusion. Democracy works most everywhere. It depends on uh, how people are willing to take on certain actions. I'm going to share the slides, don't worry. I will share them, I will share notes. Then the criticisms of theory, we are seeing that how to measure the fashion, it is very hard to measure the fashion. Now, I think that Isaac has killed his wife and mother. Uh, do you think that those in the bus won't blame him? They will, just are, they are likely to blame. They'll be like, now you look at this kid. How do you kill you, kill people? It is, it is, so it is a bit challenging. Uh, then, uh, thank you, Alex, for that. Then we have uh, minority suffer at the expense of majority. Yeah, for example, if you are in, in a company, you, you spend your, your profit as you give it to, you, you give your profit to your employees as a, uh, as a way of increasing their salary to motivate them. Also spend your profit in doing CSR activities because you made your business to make profit, but then you're also spending it there. Then um, we have difficulty to apply. It is very hard to apply. Now I, should, I, had, I saw here uh, in the chat room, people were sending, I, how dare you? How, do, how can I kill my mother? How can I kill my loved ones? People are just, it is very hard. It is hard to, 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 to choose in most cases what you have to decide, but it has to have an impact. You saw the man before he killed his, uh, his son. Uh, uh, when you look at uh, his son, uh, he had to take time to 
to to choose should I kill my son? It was really a hard decision. So it is difficult to apply. Not everyone could apply. You'll find that others will be like, ah, oh, let me go, I pick my son, I run, and others die. It is up to them. Others will be like, ah, oh, I would rather kill myself and be 65 and I save my wife. And but as you save your wife, you leave up behind for other guys. Isaac, you leave your wife behind for uh for, for someone else, for Jingo. Mm. No, so you can't. <laughs> okay, then. okay. So that is uh, Italian uh, theory. Men, men love hunting. <laughs> that is Italian theory. Um, now let's look at um, egoism theory as another consequentialist theory. Now, uh the consequences of an action that generate interest for an individual or that generate selfish interests uh, is what uh, defines our basis for making uh, a, a moral judgment. That what is right is what generates selfish interest or it is what generates happiness for an individual. It is what makes someone happy. It is, sorry, not happy. It is what um, uh, settles one's emotional being. That is egoism. So simple terms, we are looking at selfish interest, egoism. Just from, you all know what egoism is, selfish interest, that uh, we only mind about us, ourselves. We don't mind about others. Uh, just that uh, I want to, I don't know whether I should share with you another video. Most of you are commenting about um, sound, but this one, I think it has no sound. Yes, sir. Let me share it. Let me share it. Uh, let me look for it here. Where is it? It is here. Sorry. Let me share it. I want you to follow it, then I will use another example as well. I have another one. Recording now, midnight, in progress. Nothing happens until midnight. As it approaches midnight, Isaac calls Jingo and Alvin. Jingo, Alvin, and these two pretend that they, they are in this deep sleep. They are in deep sleep. Now, as they pretend that they are in deep sleep, Isaac and Aisha, they start what you all know. Most of you, what you all know, the Deca starts shaking as if you see, as if an earthquake is passing. Then, uh, after five, after three minutes, Isaac calls Jingo, Alvin. They all say well, yes, please. As they all say yes, please, there is like, have you had Musi see earthquake first? So uh, you people, I thought that you had. Uh, they're like, yeah, we've had the earthquake. You know that is like now, the Isaac's action is ego is uh, is what portrays the ego that people have, that you don't mind about the presence of Alvin and Jingo. What makes you what makes what satisfies your ego is at that particular time, is having intimacy with who? Having intimacy with uh, with uh, Aisha, Aisha, and that is uh, egoism. Now let's look at uh, the criticisms, the, the relevance is, sorry, the relevance is and applicability of the theory we are seeing. However, egoism is not that a bad theory. At one point, someone, some, what could make someone happy might also be, all, sorry, something that might um, uh, uh, settle someone's emotions could be things that are related to maybe saving others. I, so if I save others, it makes me feel happy. So relevance is that applicability, individual satisfaction, yeah, it promotes individual satisfaction, just as Isaac is satisfied after, have, after intimately, uh, uh, after being in intimacy with Aisha, he's satisfied, now he's seeing his money. Then personal involvement, yeah, we always uh, at places of work, you will find that what makes you feel happy, is something that looks good. Now, you involve yourself 
in doing certain things such that uh, you become happy. Then uh, business rules at the initiation stage. When a business is starting in most cases, the owner sets rules that will guide it, that will govern it. Uh, and those rules are dependent upon the owner of the business. You have supposed to come here at seven, it is ETC. For example, in my company, I, I came up with my rules that govern my business. Uh, I told my, my staff, all, all guys are supposed to come at, at work when they are putting on kanzus, and ladies are supposed to put on gomesi, and that is our uniform. And they have nothing to do, though they get pissed at times, but that is what I chose. Opportunity for self-provision. Prov uh, yeah, you always provide for yourself. You always... Um, about yourself. I don't say job, but hey, the economy is not good. Business, but we already start. Recording in progress. Then lack of objectivity is subjective in nature. You only subject your decisions to what serves your interests as a person. You don't look at things as uh, uh, at a wider scope. Then supports conflict of interest. Yeah, you only do what serves your interest. It supports conflict of interest. And that is... Egoism. Uh, uh, let's look at and what what, uh, uh, what is unethical is one that displeases. Now, hedonism is it could be. However, the difference between hedonism and egoism is that uh, hedonism is more. It, what pleases you might be what pleases even others in most cases. Yet egoism is what what is good is what satisfies your individual interest as a person. Here we are looking at pleasure, the other one we are looking at uh, satisfaction. Uh, now, the pleasure that you get from uh, uh, being with friends, being happy is what defines hedonism. Now, you can be happy in drinking, boozing, being with, uh, having house parties, etc., etc. Uh, that is pleasure, and that is what is right to you, according to hedonism. So that is the only thing that we have to know about it. We don't have to focus much. On it. Uh, we we have to concentrate on other theories. Now let's look at all the ontology theories. Now the theories, but we have to. Of them, we have recording in progress. Kantian uh, or duty theory. So, when talks of duty theory, that uh, the person is simply meaning Kantian theory. And when you look at non consequentialist theories, as I earlier said, our judgment of right and wrong is based on the action itself not the consequences of the what? Of the action, just the action itself. The mere fact that you've thought of slapping someone, that is wrong because slapping is not, it is not right. Slapping, in it, we don't have to wait for that person to cry or even uh, laugh or what. Slapping is wrong in its own form. Now, um, Kantian says that what is right, an action is only right if it is uh, if it is uh, it is in accord with some list of duties and obligations. That um, uh, what is right under any circumstances should be in accord to 
uh, in uh, one feeling is duties and obligations. For example, when you look at our parents, our parents um, have a duty. They have duties and obligations. They have to provide for you tuition, shelter, clothing, eating, everything. And if they do not do that, it means that they are wrong. I think I have that video, but I'm trying to beat time. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Someone is asking whether I don't have that video. Let me see among the videos that I have. I have it somewhere. Mm. I'm looking for that video. <clears throat> get it, bro, get it. Mm. I, I don't see it in my videos here, but I have it. Let me see it. Did someone play around with my computer? Isaac, I, I, it, it seems you played around with my computer. I don't see it here. Yeah. We started up to five. We started up to 11. Up to 5 p.m. Up to 5 p.m. <laughs> you man. Mm -hmm. Now, we are, um, we are busy enjoying the lecture. Um, uh, thank you. I'm, I'm looking for my video. I don't see it. But uh, okay, I'm sorry, but I'm going to share it still. But I'm not seeing it. I, I have so many videos. I'm not seeing it. And uh, some of them I didn't name as I, I, I thought I, I did. I'm sorry for that. Let me first uh, proceed, but um, I will share it. If I get it, I will share it uh, on, uh, on Mopsip still. Each theory has a video that I, I got it from. Uh, now let's go back to... I was saying right is what it is that action that is in accord to one is duties and obligations. For example, that uh, uh, a, thief, a thief is running as he runs, is in your house. Now, what do you do? What do you do? You threaten to kill your family, what and what. But they come running, they reach your house and they're like, have you seen the thief? We are looking for him. All of you, yeah, they are looking for a thief. What do you do? Do you report the thief? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Eh? Margaret, please mute it. Margaret, mute Someone should tell Naso and Bow, which it is, but we continue. Ah, we look at can can say that what do you do if they come to a thief at that particular time? <laughs> <laughs> Recording in progress. How I can make my students understand. Because it's my obligation, it is my duty. And Kant says that whatever I'm doing, if I share with you videos, that is right. If I tell you, if I come to class, I repeat for those who ask me to repeat for those it is right. Can't, however, 
uh, if students have their duty and their duty is to us, they have an obligation over their parents, attend class, be responsible, make it simple, provide for your future, it is, it is, and that is what Kant says. And those who fail to do so, Kant says that they are wrong. Now, uh, Kant holds that our moral duties are driven by the categorical imperative. Categorical imperative is a, is a rule. These are rules that, uh, uh, that govern our decisions, that should govern our decisions. And uh, the categorical imperative, categorical imperative has three maxims. Three maxims for those of you who are non-trading. Three maxims. Maybe I have to include it here. There are three maxims that uh, try to explain the categorical imperative, the general rule. We have maxim one. Maxim one says that I'm I'm, I'm typing here. Maxim one is says that. Uh, uh, it is universal, uh, universal, but this is how it states. Act so as act so as that action can become a universal law. That is but in one. That is how it is stated that we also moral law. But you look, uh, an action, an, uh, an ethical law can be universal if everybody wish to follow it equally. That you look at your action, whatever you're going to do, can it become a universal thing? If not, then don't do it. If an action is morally right or wrong, it is similar for everyone. That if all people can look at whatever you're going to do as some things, don't do it. If people can see whatever you're going to do as some, uh, and they can, mm -hmm. I might be sharing my videos when I'm teaching, even there are others who do the same thing. And that is universal. That is universal or that what you're doing can be done by others, then that is the right thing. But if others cannot do it, can, cannot perceive it as something right, then don't do it. For example, if I come to class and I abuse you, can it be done by others, by other lecturers in MOOCs and worldwide? If they cannot do the same thing, please don't do it. Uh, can you hear me? I'm seeing someone is asking, is the lecture done? Sorry, okay, very good. But maxim, maxim two, maxim simply means act. No, not act. Humanity. All treat others treat as themselves rather not as not as means that is much as ends in themselves rather not as means that treat others and oneself as ends in whatever you do you look at it as something that you're doing not use others as a means for you to achieve that same thing no Whatever you're doing in life, for example, in businesses, normally do business uh, and uh, tend not to someone is saying, sir, I wanted to be treated. Uh, okay, no, okay, you can use that, but it, it is better to say treat others and ends in. Not as means. Not as means. I'm sorry. Um, uh, sorry, as yeah, as ends in themselves, but not as means. Now, uh, what happens here? What happens here? I'm sorry, my network is on and off. Here is 
For example, guys, we have a tendency, you have a tendency of uh, sleeping with a girl, then dump them after sleeping with them. That is, you're using them as a means to yourself, to your own satisfaction. But then Kant says that that is wrong. Use these people as, a, as ends in themselves. Let's started that. Uh, we, ladies, you have this tendency of uh, dating guys. Eh? You date you, you guys. You date one who buys uh, um, his hostel. There is one who notes for you. There is one who uh, buys lunch for his, uh, pays, uh, there is one who pays uh, school fees. There is one who pays a uh, hostel for you. So all of these things, you're using these people as ends, as a means to yourself, but not as ends in themselves. Now Kant says that now the best way to treat them as ends in themselves is at least produce children for uh, uh, children for each of the people. If there are 10 guys you're dating, one child each person, one child each person, and each kid with a father in as, as ends in those. And we're going to repeat them universal. Whatever you're going to Recording in progress as something that helps you achieve what you want and achieve the desires of other people at the same time. But don't act in a way that you're making others as a way, as a means for you to achieve what you want. For example, I gave an example of guys who normally sleep with girls for just to, just to have happiness. They are using them as a means to, to their happiness. But no as a means to themselves have kids. that is uh, what the maxim tells us to do then uh, maxim three is more of uh, acts to, uh, as you create a kingdom of ends create an environment where people benefit from such actions not only that, that portray the image of the society where you work, all where you stay, let it be let your actions look at collectivism. I have a team of uh, my friends. I uh, will do research. We are researchers, and what happens? Yesterday we had an argument, and mistake. They didn't tell other team members, and I told them no, that is wrong because I'm their, I'm their uh, team leader. I, I told them that is wrong. wrong. If someone wins the grand, it has to be us. On a grant, it is not your grant. Recording in progress. Now the criticisms. Uh, the criticisms have. Uh, uh, role of sympathy uh, as a legitimate move uh, motive behind one is conduct. Now can't uh, can't. Says that we do not we do not sympathize that uh, 
we do not just sympathize with people. For example, if I sympathize with uh, someone who doesn't want to eat, and I get, I, I give money to that person to buy what to eat. Kant says that, no, that is not sympathy. That is my duty as a person. All that is my obligation. I have done what I'm supposed to do. Because I'm supposed to protect others. I'm supposed to protect, it is not sympathy. So uh, Kant assumes that all humans know their duties and obligations. No, not everyone knows. Some people, Okay, I'm going to tell them Chirabo. Uh, some people are reminded of their duties and obligations. Don't you see that you remind them their duties, even when they know that they have to, but they forget. So people, someone might forget. So Kant says that there is no room for forgetting. There's no room for forgetting. That there is no clear guideline on assessing what is right and what is, uh, and what is, uh, okay, what is our duty and what is not my duty. That uh, uh, when do I know that uh, this is what I'm supposed to be doing and uh, this is not what I'm supposed to be doing. That some, <clears throat> some of our duties are not prescribed by society and by, by the universe. They are not but we just find ourselves doing them. So it becomes a bit hard. So actions are right in proportion as they tend to promote happiness, wrong as they tend to produce the reverse of. <clears throat> now, uh, our actions at times are aimed at promoting happiness among ourselves. For example, if I save a, a dog that is going to be knocked by a, a car, it creates happiness but then can does not what duty there is no thing that you're going to do that creates happiness to you that is what can says no even if you're happy even if you're not happy it is your duty because uh someone is asking uh pardon and denied. I, I don't get it. Point one. Point one on, okay. Can't deny the role of sympathy. Okay. Uh, okay. Now, can't say is that there is no sympathy. Sympathy staff. No, no, no. Uh, for I uh, will take it. We sympathize with uh, with people and depend upon our sympathy. Others. You do certain. For example, you find your is hungry, and uh, you give food to that person. To can't. That is not sympathy. To can't. It is you do that. That is what can says. So there is no room for sympathy under Kantian theory. I think I've tried to explain it, but, but have I made it clear? Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm begging that uh, we end the because you have another class, I think. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel.